Hello everyone. It seems the Hobar copy method confused some people on how to set up the macro so I made this video to show how you can set up the one button rotation without having to affect your Hobars. Let's get started. We will place your one button rotation and any abilities or spells you want in Hobar 1 in the Arcanist Hobar. Remove your soul gem to access these. Copy each macro to the macro Hobars 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the order shown on the screen. The order should be the first macro with Bahamut on Hobar 1, the Titan macro on Hobar 2, the Garuda macro on Hobar 3, and finally the Ifrit macro on Hobar 4. Due to my latency, the macro sometimes is not perfectly in sync with the timings. I typically need one Hobar change to add some mashing delay between loops to avoid the macro shifting timings. Repeat the order with the area of effect macro. Add any skills, spells, abilities, or items that you want in Hobar 1 to every Hobar. You have to add it on all the Hobars because we will be copying them as the macro progresses through the rotation. For savage content I used knockback immunity on slot 3 and damage reduction on slot 4. As you can see, the last line of every macro copies the next Arcanist Hobar to Hobar 1. The copied Hobar has the next macro in the rotation and the cycle continues. My macro delay Hobar change changes the Hobar to Hobar 2. So I add the looping macro to the mashing spot on Hobar 2. All this does is change the Hobar back to Hobar 1 and copy the Arcanist Hobar 1 so the loop can begin. If your latency is very good and see no clipping in the loop you can replace the last macro in the Arcanist Hobar 5 with the loop reset macro to avoid the Hobar change delay. Let's try it out. I move the skills a bit again. In some savage fights it makes more sense to cast ruin rather than use your next summon so I keep it in the mashing hobar for those cases. I keep the four macros in a separate hobar as bookmarks. In between each summon you can easily switch from out a single target or from one summon to another. You will lose a tiny bit of GCT time but it gives you a lot of flexibility in fights. There were only three times in P3S and two times in P4S where this was needed to not have the Ifrit gap closer wipe the party. Stop mashing right before one summon ends and click on one of the bookmarks and resume mashing. If you really wanted to. You could switch the mashing place for each summon and simply pick which button to mash but then it would be a 4 button rotation omega lol lol.
you can tell a macro is going to end when the summon resources are about to run out. At this point, you can switch to the area of effect macro dot dot dot. This is really only relevant in dungeons or fights with add phases where you can mash your area of effect macro and switch to single target for the boss or a large add. In Savage you need to use damage down in knockback immunity, typically you will know exactly when you need to use it after doing the fight enough times. Dot some good weaving windows are the Ifrit punches, Garuda's swift casted ability, Bahamut ruins but for most fights it is better to drift the GCD to use your roll ability as it will likely keep you from dying. There you have it, let me know if you have any questions, enjoy, pars purple and have fun.